equals N R T. The pressure was big. 45 atmosphere. That is really big. 45 atmosphere. 0 0.08254 liters, which is a very tiny volume. Yeah. Ish. Equals N times 0 0.0821 times 6,000 6, Kelvin. <laughs> Okay, now All right. we oh, divide everything by 45 and point zero eight two five four. No, try again. What did you wrong? Put the 40, you're, uh, you divided by the wrong stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see, we got interrupted. Some students came we in did. and confused my brain, and I got my brain off point zero eight two one and um, 6,000. And then these go away, right, point zero eight two one. And 6,000. Okay, we get That's point. Right. N equals zero point zero zero seven five four. Double oh seven, kind of like Kind of. Moles of what? Moles of uh, oxygen. Now, that's not the question. It no. For moles of oxygen. It wants moles uh, or grams of P2O5. So this is moles of O2. Huh. And now I need to go back and look at my Mole balanced equation. Ratio. Now I have moles of oxygen, and I want to go to moles of P2O5, so my ratio here is 2 to 5. So I can say 5 moles of O2 to 2 moles of P2O5. The moles of O2 cancel, and now I want to get the grams I think it asks for. So I can say 1 mole of P2O5 is equal to so many grams of P2O5. Now look on the periodic table. Phosphorus is 31, oxygen is 16, so 31 times 2 is 62 plus... 142, I beat you that time. 142. I almost got it in my head there. I was close, <laughs> Mr. Sams. The old human calculator. The moles cancel, and then you would just take uh, this number times 2 times 142 divided by 5, and you get your answer, which would be what? 0.428 grams. And that's your answer. Now, notice on this particular problem, let me just compare and contrast real fast. On this particular problem, what is I did an ideal gas law problem first, and then I went and did some stoichiometry or dimensional analysis. Uh -huh. That's how you look at it. In the previous problem, let me hop back to that. In the previous problem, what I did is... Uh, we did stoichiometry first. We did the stoichiometry first. We did this is the stoichiometry we did first. And then, and then we did the ideal gas law. You have to look at the problem, frankly, and decide which way it's going to go. Yep. There's not a, I mean, there's a set way to do it, but it's, it should be inherent. I basically yeah. just look for PV equals NRT. If, I, if I'm missing two things, I do stoich first. If I have all of them, I do... PV equals NRT first. first. Okay, so that's all it. Right. All right, next uh, concept. 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 If I can talk, is the Dalton law of partial pressure. Dalton's law. Mr. Dalton, he basically said that the sum, the, the, the pressure is equal to the sum of the partial pressures. Yeah, this is probably one of the easiest things you'll do all year. The total pressure is equal to all the little pressures inside added together. Now, what does that actually mean, though? Well, if we have multiple gases in the same container, each gas contributes its own pressure. So if we have O2 and N2, the oxygen contributes a pressure, and the nitrogen contributes a pressure, and the total pressure in the container is the pressures added together. See, the oxygen molecules are moving at a particular speed, you know, and it's related to their molar mass, and we did that last time in terms of their speed. And nitrogen would actually be moving faster on average because he's a smaller molecule. And in fact, this one, if um, uh, if I was trying to find out that I, I ugh, I have three oxygen molecules for every one nitrogen in my example, mm. so. 75% uh, of the pressure would be a result of the oxygen, and only 25% would be the nitrogen if our ratio here was uh, correct. Right. You get the idea. Okay, so that's how we would do that if we had to have a container like that. Let's do a couple of examples. Or actually, no, actually, let's do an application. But the most important application that you'll see in chemistry land with Dalton's law of partial pressure is a collecting gas over water. Now, we have done this. Yes. Um, at least in our uh, chemistry classes, multiple times by this stage. But if yep. you've not done one of these, this is a, just an eminently simple experiment. Let's say that you have a container. It looks like this. You can sketch this along with me. And then I have a flask, and the flask has a seal. This is a stopper, maybe not a very good-looking stopper. And this is a tub that is filled with water. Some lovely water you drew there. I know. It's very lovely. And then in, in this tub of water, I would put an upside-down container for collecting gas. Like a Oftentimes, graduated cylinder a grad or, cylinder, or yeah. a tube specifically made for collecting gas. All right. I probably should put a little circle there. Okay. Yeah. And so what happens is, is this is actually filled to the brink with water. 
It is, and it's upside down, by the way. And it's upside down, yes, so that it's not open. And then what you do is you have a tube that comes out of here, and then it goes up into here. And then what happens is that this, this would be a gas-producing reaction. So when we produce a gas, so the gas would essentially bubble out of here, and it would go through the tube uh, in a sealed system, and it would bubble up in here. And then over time, what would happen is that this, would be, this top part would be filled with a gas, and this would be water. Now, how does that, that says gas right there. Yes. Sorry. All right, so what would be the application then of that? So if we, let's zoom in to this picture here. If this is our gas, and this is water, this is the tub here. I don't know if you guys can get in the picture here. And then this is filled with a gas, and this is the water, right, as it's, as it's bubbled through. And right. then you can measure this volume. So let's just say, for the sake of argument, that this is uh, 122 milliliters of the gas you're collecting. And you just read that by taking your eyeball and looking right here at the graduate cylinder. Right. You read the volume. And now, you read the volume. Yeah. But there's a problem. Mm. And that problem is as the gas bubbles through this tube right here, as the bubbles come up here, what is the ga what gas is being produced? Well, well we've got the g whatever gas we're being produced, but above the water, there's also water vapor. Water has something called a vapor pressure, meaning no matter what temperature it is, unless you're at absolute zero, some of that water becomes vapor. And so some of that water is a vapor up there with the gas. So we have to account for the fact that there is a tiny little bit of water in there. So I've illustrated that pictorially, is that the black balls are, um, are, are uh, gas molecules, and then the blue um, spheres, actually spheres is a better word here because they are spherical, um, are... The uh, water molecules. Water vapor molecules, and right. So if you are doing an ideal gas law equation, PV equals NRT, and you're trying to find the pressure, the problem with this particular problem is that you usually care about the pressure of the gas that you collect. You do not want the pressure of the gas you collect and, and the water. So what we do is when you find the pressure inside the container, you must subtract out the vapor pressure of the water. So the total pressure in the container is the pressure of the gas plus the pressure of the water. If we just want the pressure of the gas, we take the pressure total minus the pressure of the water to get our gas. And folks, this is super easy. It's All just you subtracting. You look so it up on a table and you subtract it from the pressure. So what you would do is if you have, if you, you would look on your barometer, okay, your barometer. So here where we live at a high altitude, the typical pressure is 560 torr. And then you would look up on a table and would have temperature. So let's say the temperature of your gas was 22 degrees Celsius, and then you would find over here the pressure of the water, so they call it the water vapor pressure table. Let's say, I don't have the table in front of me, but let's say for the sake of government it was 15 torr. You would then just subtract 15 torr, and you get 545 torr, and that is equal to the pressure of the gas. Yep. Now, a lot of you have done this, but you didn't really know why, so hopefully you understand why. The key reason why is because in this particular screen here, um, so again, ladies and gentlemen, just it's important to understand that this gas is, needs to be accounted for. Usually it's not a significant amount, but it is something. Okay. All right. Just a couple more things to chat about here. Let's do a Dalton's Law example. This is actually kind of a more gas law, so again, trouble. Mm -hmm. But the key thing that you see here is somewhere I say that it was collected over, over water. water. And so we're just going to do this problem. I'll create a blank screen. Whenever you see collected over water, you must subtract out the water vapor pressure. So I'm going to recopy the equation. SiO2 plus three carbons. So you should just kind of be reading we along this question. I balanced it for you. How S nice of us. I see plus two carbon monoxide. So now what's the question here? All right, it says, what will the volume of carbon monoxide collected over water... So watch what I write. V equals question mark from Mr. Sam's comment there. That will be produced at 22 Celsius. All right, at 22 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to just hold on. I'm going to just... Is that equal to 295 Kelvin? Kelvin. Okay. okay. Uh, seven... Or sorry, 657 millimeters of mercury. 657 torr, or millimeters of mercury. And I just divide by 760, right? Yep, that gets us 0.864 atmospheres. Just do it right away. Yep. I think that's better to do it down the road. Okay, and um, we have we want to know that after 96.25 grams of SiO2 completely reacts. 90 what? 96.25 grams of SiO2. Good. Actually, you know we've got a problem here. I did something we shouldn't have done right here. 
because what we need to do is we need to subtract the water pressure. Oh, yes, so we need to so subtract the water pressure. pressure. Let's see the pressure here. The pressure will be 657 torr. Now, what you need to do, and you don't have the water vapor pressure table, but if you look up on the water vapor pressure table, you reference 22 degrees 22 Celsius. 22 degrees Celsius. Mr. Sams has that table in front of him, so he yes. subtracts that number. It's 19.8 millimeters of mercury. So I'm going to just say 20. Uh, tor because uh, 20 decimal tor because um, this only goes round to the nearest ten, uh, yeah, whole, number. whole number and so I can easily say that that'll be 637 yep. tor and you divide that by 760 to get your ATMs and Point you now get .838 eight 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 ATMs so you gotta watch that yep now in this particular problem we do have P we do have uh, we also know volume actually we don't know don't volume, know volume. Um, we know temperature, but mm -hmm. we also don't know N. Yes, but we know this. So we know this is going to have to do. Uh, we have to do what? First? Stoichiometry first, and stoichiometry. then PV equals NRT. So I've got 96.25 grams of SiO2. What is SiO2 better known as, Mr. Sands? Silicon dioxide. That's uh, glass, quartz. Mm -hmm. And right where we live, for those who live close to where we're at, there are lots of quartz mines. And um, yes, so this is a uh, abundant mineral up in where we live. Silicon is, uh, I think, uh, 28. So 28, 28 plus 32, 32 is 60. 60. Yeah, 60. Yeah, sorry, I was looking at the table. I couldn't find it. And then uh, the mole-mole ratio, there's two moles of carbon monoxide to one mole of silicon dioxide. And the moles are? That gives us uh, 3.21 moles of CO. Now I'm going to do PV equals NRT. See, the only thing that's different about this problem compared to the ones we did just a little bit ago is we just subtracted the water pressure. Yeah. So I'm going to do PV equals NRT. The pressure is? Uh, 0.828. Whatever we wrote. 838. 838. So I thought you had it in your head. I, no, I don't have much in my head these days. That's your P. I have screaming babies that P. wake up at <laughs> odd hours of the night. Equals, <laughs> and your moles was 3.21. R is 0.0821. Now, I'm not putting in the units now because I'm not being slightly lazy. And the temperature was 295. You divide both sides by 0 0.838. And Point we get? 0.838. Boom. Crancel. Crancel. There we go. Crancel. 92.8 liters of carbon monoxide. That's a lot of carbon monoxide. That's a lot of carbon monoxide. Think of a two-liter pop bottle, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And you have uh, 46, 46 of, those. of those. That looks like a pop bottle, doesn't it? Sure. Okay. All right. Example two. Okay. Now, this is th these are just miscellaneous uh, gas law problems. These are not uh, particularly related. But we just wanted to solve a couple more problems for you. So we're going to see if we can figure out how we're going to solve a problem. Because they're not going to say, do the ideal gas law. Do the combined gas law. Right. Do you have law. to figure out what you gas law you're do. dealing with. Yeah. So here we got to deal. That's right. We have a 0.5 liter container. It contains nitrogen gas. Okay. So let me just draw a container. And its volume is 0.5 liters. Notice I love to write diagrams. Then I can kind of picture it. Mm. I'm a pictorial guy, I guess. I don't know. Some of you are pictorial, and that's great. If some of you aren't. It's okay. Deal with it. Okay. Temperature <laughs> is zero degrees Celsius. I know I'm going to have to convert that to Kelvin. If the highest pressure, pressure the container can withstand before exploding is three atmosphere, so Wait, P... We, we have a pressure no. already, too. Oh, point, yeah. Point 0.8 atmosphere. And we have a pressure that's 0.8 atmosphere. So this container, if it gets to three atmosphere, will blow up. Yes. Is what it's saying. So actually, we're going to solve for P. Yes. And if P is bigger than three, it, it will explode. Boom. And if it isn't? Not so bad. Not so bad. Um, so what's the highest temperature? So what's the highest temperature you can do before you heat it, assuming the Wait. volume is constant? So do we need to solve for P or do we need to solve for T? Yeah, actually, this is wrong. I Let's solve for T. This is actually, P is actually going to be three atmospheres. Yeah. And we're going to say T equals question mark. Yep. So we have, what kind of equation? We got, we well, got a that looks, condition we've got here. a P, V, and a T. And we have a new condition of P and T. And it also said that volume is constant. So let's just go back to combined gas law. Now, what's the cool thing? They said the volume, volume is, is constant, constant, so we just ignore the volume. volume. And basically, you just have a P over T problem. Yep. This is a gay Lussac law. law problem. So our pressure one was pressure one point, was 0 0.8 atmospheres. 0 0.8 atmospheres. T one was zero Celsius, which is 273 Kelvin. Must be in Kelvin. Uh, three atmospheres for a new pressure, and we're solving for our new temperature. So I'd cross multiply.